Hey guys, welcome back to Bixby's Beer Reviews. So exciting to have you here with me today. We got a we got some big doings a transpiring. Uh, now, I've uh, I've talked a, a fair amount of trash over the course of this show about uh, various heavily adjuncted beers, adjuncted stouts, barrel age stuff, ten percent plus beers, uh, pudding cups, if you will. Uh, but you know what? It's it, it's time to put my money where my mouth is. Uh, that's right. We're gonna be doing an imperial pastry stout. <laughs> Now, had to go to a brewery I trust uh, to, to try to make this an enjoyable experience. And now, uh, breaking a couple of rules today, we got a pastry side. I'm also, I'm going with a beer that is not local to me. You know, I usually don't like it when a beer has to, to go all the way across the country just to reach me. But there are a few places where I'll, uh, I'll break that rule. And one of those is Mason Ale Works, San Marcos, California. Wonderful brewery. I really love some of the stuff they have. Uh, now, they do make a good hazy down there, but I, you know, I would say hazy's fresh. But today's beer, I don't think it'll mind if uh, it's been in its, its body. It's can a little bit longer. This is Children of Loki. Uh, Children of Loki is a banana pancake uh, inspired stout. We've got bananas, cacao, maple, and vanilla, and it comes in at a, uh, a regal 13.5%. So it, it, it ticks all the boxes of, uh, of your classic heavily adjuncted stout. Comes from, from a great brewery, so I'm very excited. Let's crack this one open, take a look. So in, uh, in my own home brewing, actually, I really like banana beers. I always have, I know it's a, a little bit of a, a weird approach, but I've made a few myself. Uh, also, uh, enjoying a family tradition tonight, uh, breakfast for dinner, uh, something we do pretty often. So this beer will go perfectly with it. But. Let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, not surprising, this is a dark beer. Well, I wouldn't say, you know, maybe you noticed during the pour, it doesn't have that sort of motor oil viscosity that you sometimes see from really big stouts. So it might be fair to infer that it doesn't have the thickest body. Uh, but if you look again, it's, it's, there's no light coming through here. We got real dark malts going on. You know, also a very, very light uh, ring of, of, of foam here. Probably not too heavily carbonated. Uh, so looks like a, a very, very delicious beer. Let's go ahead and give it a smell. Hmm. Uh, surprisingly uh, measured aroma from this one, given, given everything that's going on. Uh, I would say that chocolate, both uh, chocolatey malt and the, the actual cacao, the kind of dark chocolate bar aroma, very present right up front. I also do get the maple syrup. Uh, something I've personally noticed about beers with maple syrup in them is that by and large, I think it tends to show up more on the aroma than the flavor. And you might expect that given that it is sugar and it can be fermented out in most instances. Uh, but this beer really leading with uh, a kind of measured chocolate approach. I don't get the bananas quite yet, but I'll be, be very interested to see where they show up in the glass. So let's go ahead and give it a taste. Mm. Ah, uh, again, uh, a very restrained and I think well-integrated uh, set of flavors uh, going on here. Uh, the first thing I'll note is it is fairly thick, but like we observed with the pour, this is far from the thickest stout I've ever had. We are not in pudding cup territory. When I say that term, uh, what I generally mean is beers that are both too sweet and have too much body and end up having a, what I think to be a very unpleasing thickness. Uh, this beer, uh, a very appropriate level of body for what it's trying to do. Uh, in no small part also because I do get the booziness. I would say that the, the banana flavors show up in small measure. They don't wash out the other flavors. They're not uh, excessive but they are there. And the combination of that and the, the booziness gives me almost a sort of bananas foster impression, which is a, a dessert that I very much enjoy. Uh, helping out here also is, uh, I think sometimes heavily adjuncted stouts lean on vanilla a little too much. And I think vanilla has the ability to wash out a lot of other flavors, to, to also to contribute to an impression of overly sweet or overly thick beer. Uh, and the vanilla, I would say, is, is at the very bottom here. I get the, the chocolate and almost sort of a roasty coffee character here, probably from the malts uh, first. And then I get a little bit of the banana and, and the booziness second. And I think that's a, a good sort of stack of flavors, a good progression through the sip uh, to ultimately give you the impression of something that's at once uh, the, the impression of a food item, something that's not actually beer, but is still very much identifiably a beer, uh, very much drinks like a beer, uh, and is not just too heavy or too crushingly sweet, which is the thing that I really don't like. So uh, I, I'll always encourage you to be very judicious in your purchases of pastry stouts, especially imperial or double 
pastry stouts, but I think Mason's done a very well, a good one here. Uh, I like the combination of flavors, and I think that they're very well integrated, which is a tough thing to do. So, thanks for joining me for checking out this uh, this frankly insane beer. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't want to drink it. It was Fritz. Uh, Fritz over here, he's the one who, who wants me to try all the, the baked type item beers. Uh, so, you know, I, I just I just do what he says. But uh, until next time, hopefully I'll get to choose the beer next time and uh, I look forward to seeing you then. So, bye now.